All right, so we're going to get started with our Space Invaders game. So um, we got to choose, and Space Invaders won by, um, with three votes. Second place, we had the the Chrome game with two and a half votes. Okay, and so um, it was a really tight race, the, um, the dinosaur game. But, um, yeah, so we'll start here, and, you know, you could probably take the things we did here with Space Invaders and apply them to other things. So we're going to start by... Come over here to platform IO <clears throat> and we're going to click open and make a new project and we will call this Space Invaders and we'll use the Arduino Uno. We could potentially change this later. Um, space Invaders. Okay. Um, so it's going to take a minute to load and there you go. We trust the author because we're the author. And it's going to open up for us. Yeah. Okay. So I've got this weird thing where it's got me. So we're going to actually open up that folder. So we're going to say open folder. And we're going to actually open up that specific folder. So that's our working folder. So space invaders. Uh, don't save. <clears throat> okay. So here we are opened up. And here's our code. And so before we really do any coding, we're going to add in our libraries here. And so we're going to go to platform IO, libraries, and we're going to get um, the graphics library, GFX. Um, and I'll mention that what we'll, we're going to use these for uh, this project. I've actually not used these ones very much. I've used some different libraries for things I've done. Um, so these ones are I'm not as familiar with, but um, they're good tools, so we'll use them. And let's see, we're going to add one more library. Um, okay, so now we want, nope, not that one. We want, come back, and SSD 1306. <clears throat> I've actually used this one quite a bit, um, this UAG2 library. Okay, this one right here, add the project, and space invaders. Okay, and so now we have um, the start of our project here. Okay, then we do one more thing. We want to come to here, and this link I'll provide for you, but we want to copy in this code right here. Okay, and so this we're going to use this as a timer, so we're going to copy that, um, and then we're just going to go to right here to make a new file. We're going to call it millistimer.h and we're going to paste our code in here okay and this is our kind of timer class that I've made and we've used in the past um, for a previous game that we didn't finish um, but maybe some of you tried and so we can we're going to include it right here make sure everything builds We're going to say millistimer.h. Let's also do include root gfx and include um, ssd 1306. So we try these. We'll see if everything still works. Um, Building. Oh, this thing's popping up on me. It looks like we're good. I don't want to give me an error here. Let's spy. Oh, okay, interesting. Comparison between signed. Um, yeah, we can fix this. So let's look at this. Unsigned. Let's do this. We'll change this to be to you and to T. Okay. <clears throat> that should work now. Or not, but oh, that's why. Okay, and this is we'll we'll talk about that kind of stuff later, but um, I should turn off the USP idea. Okay, so it looks like we built successfully, we hit that warning. We have a warning here just because we have a variable that we're not using. 
and we're not going to worry about that for now. The other thing you could do is you could take this Millis timer file and we can move it to our include folder here like that. And so now it lives in there. And so we can files that we can include, we can keep there or we can keep in the source thing. Um, but uh, that's what the include folder is there for. So <clears throat> now we're going to start building our code. And so um, the um, if we go to write dot PIO or actually, uh, yeah, and then do lib depths, or that would be the library dependencies. And we're going to start here using the examples for the SSD 1306. So it's a 128 by 64 I2C. And we see this example here. And so we can copy some things from this to get us started. So we're going to copy these two lines. Um, and we're going to copy <clears throat> these three lines. Okay. So we set our screen height and our width. We don't have a reset button. The screen address, um, I think our address is actually 3C. Um, let me double check here. So our address is, um, no, it's 78, maybe? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll figure this out with the address. Um, I'm going to try 70 to start. OX. 78. So this is 78 in hex, which in decimal is, um, I'm not sure, something bigger than 78. Um, okay, so we got the, the, that there. Um, and now let's come back over to here. And so this is an example of how you could like put a logo on there. But what we're going to do is we're going to copy this in here. Um, and this is our initialization. We'll get the serial buff again as well. So we can use the serial monitor. So we can go like that. Okay. And that should get us up and running. And then <clears throat> we're going to clear the display. And we'll draw. Yeah, let's do this. We'll clear the display. And then um this one here is the one that shows like what's basically. Um, so what happens is inside this library, get rid of this. Um, inside this library here, the display, this um, Adafruit SSD 1306, what happens is there is a an array of um, memory that's storing the information for the pixels on the display. And so anytime we call this function, it clears out that store memory. It references here as the, as the buffer. So there's a buffer, and we clear out that buffer. And then anytime we write to the display, for example, we draw a line or a rectangle or a circle or a pixel, what we're doing is we are setting um, values in that buffer, and then we're updating that. Right here, when we click display, we actually send the commands to the display so that this display gets updated. Okay, but the one that I want to find here is an example. Oh, that's interesting. We can do an animation there. Um, I don't think we want that. Let's just look for, let's see, draw. <clears throat> so we draw a bitmap. All right. So this is how we draw a bitmap right here. Um, and this we're gonna want to do this. Okay. So we're gonna copy this code right here. And we can type it over. We, we've got this function. We'll, 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 we're not probably gonna use this function, but we'll have it here in the reference. Okay. <clears throat> And we'll just comment it out for now. If you press Control slash, you can comment it all at once, or at once. So let's go ahead and run this, and we should see a pixel drawn on the screen. So I press the Run or Upload button. It's going to compile. Let's we'll see if we get any errors. It's going to run it, and hopefully you see something. Mine came unplugged. 
and I got nothing on mine. So okay, so it wasn't working. I figured out why. So the the address was wrong. It should be three C, um, which is weird because it's definitely something else on this. But and look, if you hover over this, it tells you that's sixty, um, in in as a decimal. Um, <clears throat> but if you if you look at the back of this thing, it says the address is seventy eight. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. It's clearly a mistake. Um, okay, and I also add this in here so we can print out values online. You should have a little dot on your pixel, and um, this is a pretty good start here. And so the next step we're going to do is we're going to look at um, using this render library. Sorry, I'm just putting this back. <clears throat> the library to render the um, some like logo. So we're gonna we're gonna do space invaders. So the first thing we want to do is just to be able to get our characters on the screen. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna encode our graphics as binary graphics. Okay. And so I'll show you how to do that. I'll pull those up and I'll show you. Okay. So we're gonna make something that is gonna be a, like a char or array. Or char stands for character. A character. Hmm. Let me back it ahead myself here. Okay, so before we get into what a character is, let's talk about representing numbers. So in we have when we write an integer type, we have actually a couple options here. So the integer defaults to um, and we'll call this fifty five. So <clears throat> we're missing the there we go. Okay, so this is underneath that this is a thirty two bit signed integer, which means that it can rep represent a number using 32 bits. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So this times 4. And when 1, 2, 3, 4. And each of these groups of 8 is called a byte. And so this has a size of 4 bytes. And so this takes up four bytes of memory to store this integer. Um, <clears throat> you can also have a 32-bit um, unsigned integer, which would look like the same thing. It's going to be four bytes. And so the difference is, in the case of the 32-bit signed integer, this bit right here is interpreted as a sign, like a positive or negative. And the encoding of it is a little bit, um, we're not going to go into that because it, it's, um, there's some math involved and it's just going to be a little bit too much for this. Um, <clears throat> but that's represented as a sign bit, whereas all of these are represented as numbers. And so in the case of the signed, unsigned integer, we can represent values from 0 to when they're all 1s, it's going to be... Um, let me do the calculation real quick. I think it's 65,000, right? So 2 to the power of 32. Nope, that would be for 16 billion. So 2 to the power of 32 is 4,294,000. Uh, um, and so those are the values we can represent with a 32 bit unsigned integer, whereas with a signed integer, it's going to be about half that. And so it's going to be basically negative 2,147,000,447,483,648. It can be that all the way to um, positive that minus 1, right? Because it would account for the 0 as well. Okay? And so. This one can represent this range of values, whereas this one represents this range of values. Okay, and those are 32-bit integers. And we can also have 16-bit integers. Um, signed and unsigned. So if we're look, doing the math, 16 bits divided by 8 is 2. So that is represented with 2 bytes. Okay. And so that's going to be half as much information and so to the power of 16 
fifty is that's going to be sixty five thousand. So to the power of sixteen is sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six. Okay, and then divide that by two. That's thirty two thousand seven six eight, all the way up to. 36, 32,767. So these are the range of values we can represent with a signed integer or an unsigned integer. Okay, and then finally, we can represent it with a single byte, which would be an 8 bit signed or unsigned integer. Okay, which means we just have these values. Okay, and so 2 to the power of 8 is 256, so we can go 0 to 256, I guess technically 255, right? And this would be 35, because we're counting to 0, okay? <clears throat> so I had, I was overflowing my integers on these examples. Um, overflow means when you count past the, the limit. Okay, and so this one's going to be uh, one negative 128, all the way to positive 127. And so that's the range of eyes we could represent there. Okay? And so these are one byte because there are only eight bits. And this is the number of bits that we use to represent them. And remember, byte is eight of these bits. Okay? So from here, these are all kind of integer types. You can, like, you can have 64 bit integers, that's what your computer is using. Um, and then there's other types like doubles and things like that. But really, What's important here, if I call this an int, it's going to be a 32-bit side integer. If I do uint 32t, that's going to be a 32-bit unsigned integer. And what that does is it tells the, basically, the, the it's basically is how the memory on the device is going to interpret that value. And you can get really creative and you can kind of switch between one and the other and get kind of hacky there and stuff. But... For now, um, we can understand these as the, kind of um, a trade-off between size and storage and amount of information. And so if we want to draw something, a picture, we need to represent. And so like on our display here, it can only be black and white. So things are just going to be basically ons and offs. And so we can represent them with a collection of ones and zeros. Okay. And so, especially since we're doing some smaller images, we can actually use an 8-bit or 8-bit integer, and really want an 8-bit unsigned integer to represent them. And that's where this char comes in. So char is a character, and the char is an 8-bit unsigned integer. Okay. I can't type right now, so we're just going to pretend I can't do that for you. <laughs> and so we want to make a char array, or a uint 8t, so 8-bit unsigned integer array. Um, and let's do our spaceship, okay, or our rocket. What spaceship? Space ship. Okay. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to graph out in binary what we want it to look like. And so what we can do is, um, if we put 0b, we can type in binary. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits here. They're all zeros. Okay, and so we could think of it as a 1 is filled and the 0 is not filled. Okay, and so we can go, say, let's do 8 by 8 rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we might decide to make this smaller later. <clears throat> and so now we've got this, and let's actually fill these all in as zeros. Okay. Looks like I got an extra one. Okay. And so now let's draw out our spaceship. So if we look up the Space Invaders spaceship, um, we see some examples um, that we can work from. You know, maybe we want to do something like this. Um, you know, we only have eight 
pixels, so we don't can't maybe do this quite of detail, um, but something similar to that. So maybe we want to go like we'll set the two middle ones as ones, like that, and like this, like that. And we'll just do that all the way down, and that's kind of like the main structure of our spaceship. And then we'll go like this. Something like that. And we can render this and see what it looks like. Okay? And there we go. And so this is something that you can really easily change yourself. And if you hover over these, you can see what they are. So as an integer, that's a 24. We could also represent that same value as um, in hexadecimal. So like this, this would be 1. And this would be a 4. No, that would be an 8. So this would be 18 hexadecimal. Um, it would be the equivalent of that. And so sometimes when you see graphics or like fonts, for example, packaged up like this, instead of writing them in binary, they're going to write them in hexadecimal. And so the benefit of doing binary here is that we can see specifically, so you might just put like a bunch of hexadecimal letters here, but if we write out in binary, then we can actually see what it should look like when we render on the screen. Okay, and so now let's come back to um, our tool right here to render the bitmap. So we want to grab this draw bitmap function. Okay, <clears throat> and instead of drawing a pixel, we're going to draw our spaceship. And come with these things. We're not going to get too fancy here. So um, I believe what we're going to put here is our. Um, yeah, let's just erase it. Okay. So for draw bitmap, we need the following. We'll just copy this so we can reference it. This is called a. Uh, this is basically you can pull up the function here, right? So we can look at it and see how it works and everything. But we just want to grab it so that we can use the prototype to draw this out. Okay, so x is going to be our starting x position. So let's go with, start with 10 and 10 for x and y position. And then the it says a uint 8t bitmap. And so this is basically how we pass in our array. Okay, and so we're going to snag spaceship. And I'm going to drop it right here. Okay. And then the width is going to be 8, and the height is going to be 8, and the color is going to be, um, if I just want black, right? I'm not sure. Let's see how many colors. Yeah, we'll do black. No, we want it to be white. Okay. And so if we try running this, let's see if we run any issues. Let me clean up all this junk that had up here. We need to put a coal semicolon right there, and we should be good. And let's run this. And if everything worked right, you should have a spaceship on your screen. Let's see if it did it. And there we go. Got a little spaceship on my screen. Okay. And so, okay. So I paste in the simulator here, and we're going to draw our spaceship. And you can see it right there. And so now you can kind of change it if you want, or if you like it, you can leave it. If you want to make it a little bit smaller or bigger, you can try doing that. And then I think what we'll also do is let's come up with, you can use my spaceship or a different one. Let's go ahead and copy this. And let's make one called Alien Ship, right? It's because we got to have the bad guys. And so we'll clear this out. And so I want you to come up with your um, what you want your alien ship to look like. And you can draw it out here. And then what we'll also do is, if you wanted to add some animation here, let's come down to this. We're going to take this here. And then you can do the same thing, though, to draw your alien ships, right? So you're going to copy of this. And you can change that to the alien ship. 
and you put it in maybe a different spot. So this is X, so let's move that over a little bit. 50. The spaceship should go towards the bottom right. So we have, I think, uh, we have 64 pixels of height. So 64 minus our height of 8 pixels is going to be 56. So let's put it at 55 for the spaceship. Um, and then, I just spent 80. Let's see where I spent it wrong here as well. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this here. We're going to move it down here into our loop. And then we'll say int x equals 10 int um, increment equals negative. Let's go with actually we're going to go with 5. And then what we'll do is we're going to make this to be x. All right? And then we'll say um, ink x plus ink. Okay, and we'll say if x is greater than, and this will be, so basically it's going to move our spaceship back and forth. And so the screen has a width of um, 128, so we don't want it to go up the screen. So let's see, 8 minus 1, so that's 120. So let's say if it's greater than 120, 115, or x is less than, we'll say um, 10, and we can adjust these later. We're going to say ink equals negative ink, and that's going to change the direction. And we'll add a small delay here. Let's say delay of 100 and then this should now animate our spaceship it's going to kind of go back and forth if we run it so we'll copy this into platform.io oh got an error let's see okay x equals there we go that's assigned it back to x or let's do this. X plus equals ink. There we go. X plus equals ink. And we have it up here too. So we gotta delete this guy. It's good to name your variables as something other than X. So you know what they mean and you don't accidentally use it again. Okay, so we did run into an issue where. Okay, so we run it. And we see our little spaceship dancing across the screen. You can mess around with animating it yourself a little bit more. And we also want to add our alien ship. So you can see that if I put some things here, then I'll skip it. I'll see something on the screen. And you can really just do whatever you want here. But if I rerun this now, I've got my alien spaceship. And that didn't do a very good job there. But you could also look at Space Invaders. Alien. I can't type it in. Okay. Space Invader. So this is kind of what the alien looks like. So you can do something like this. Um, again, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. They're using probably twice as many pixels as us there. This one you could maybe pull off with eight pixels. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you could do something like this right here, maybe. So, or maybe something like this, sort of. It would have to be kind of a modified version. But you got some things to work with. If, if we need to increase the, the pixels allocated for the shapes, we can do that. And then um, you should be getting your animation there. For some reason, mine's not working. So I'm going to have to figure out oh, the, the, the pin came loose is what happened. There you go. Mine's working. Okay.